When you import the Classify SDK into your project's code base, you have access to a number of functions that'll let you fetch all of your offerings and SKUs and determine whether or not your user has that permission for that subscription already. And if not, allow Glassify to make the purchase through the App Store on your behalf. When you implement those functions and how you respond to them with respect to your UI and presentation is up to you. Each Glassify function has two versions, one that provides a completion handler and the other that uses the new Swift concurrency methods introduced in iOS 15. If you wish to fetch all offerings that you have set up for your application, you can call the Glassify offerings function and it has those two versions as mentioned. For the completion handler version, the completion handler provides us with all of our offerings as an optional or an error. If you specify the offering ID as you specified in the Glassify setup and the offering exists, we get all of the SKUs for that offering. And from there, you can do what you like with that information, such as set up your paywall. In this example, I'm simply printing to the console three of the relevant properties for each SKU. You will see that this simulator is set for the United States, so the pricing will reflect the localized price for US dollars instead of the Canadian dollar. For the asynchronous version, you must implement it within an asynchronous unit of work known as a task. And this is what it looks like. If you wish to determine if the user has permission for a particular permission ID, you can use the Glassify permissions function. In this case, the completion handler will provide all of your permissions or an error. You can then determine if the permission for that permission ID you are interested in is valid and then provide feedback or access to your users. Again, the asynchronous version must be embedded within a task. To make a purchase, you'll need an actual SKU object. So you could call the Glassify SKU function, passing in the SKU ID, and then this will return a SKU or an error. If the SKU exists, you can then execute the purchase function, and it will provide you with the transaction or an error. You can then check the transaction's permission to see if it's valid, i.e. the purchase was successful, and then respond accordingly again in your app or to the user. Here's the asynchronous version of that same method. Apple requires that you provide a way for your users to restore purchases should your app not be aware of them. For this, you'll use the Glassify Restore Purchases function. And the completion handler will provide us with the permissions for your app along with an error. You can then check to see if the user has permission for that specified ID. And if valid, restore that purchase and update your UI. And if not, alert the user. And once again, here's the asynchronous version.